try to start recording. Hello, everybody out there in internet land, and welcome to the IPFS Documentation and Developer UX Working Group. Today is Monday, the 14th of October, 2019. I am your official, unofficial leader, Jessica. You can find more information about these calls, including where you can find the notes document, where we will link to all the things we talk about, in the readme of the docs repo at github.com slash IPFS slash docs. Thank you for joining us for this meeting whenever and wherever you may be in the universe. Um, I don't believe we have any sort of outstanding um, sort of one-off items, so we can just hit the recurring, recurring items on this agenda. Um, and let's just wail through them in order, um, keeping in mind that we have many epics in this um, quarter and some of them, not all of them, may have activity every single week and that is okay. Uh, Doc Speedo launch, epic 1A, Chris, take it away. This is the, the big epic beginning. Um, so I, I, I did make some headroom onto this in the last, um, last week. Unfortunately, then I got a little bit sick um, as of last weekend. So I lost a bit of time. Um, and so I was in low power mode from up until Wednesday, um, but then um, the main update for this particular call is that I've been setting up uh, the individual tooling, the app structure, looking at plugins um, and the various systems that we'll use to, to basically orchestrate the, the, the beta app and launch that into a prototype stage. Um, Eric and I had a discussion last Thursday, I think it was, um, mainly around the content that we'll initially um, target for migration for the, the first sort of prototype. Um, and there is an issue which I've linked in the doc. Um, that Eric has sketched out all the individual uh, check marks for the, the, the content that we've got based on the new IA structure that we're going for. Um, so there's there's not too much visual to show now. Um, I'll save that for a future call, but essentially it's just uh, sort of preparation work, making sure that we've we've got all the all the individual entities set up and making sure we're kind of in a good state to, to get that launched. Um, the, uh, what can I say? No, I'll, I'll save the other stuff for later. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We'll pass awesome. the button. Cool. I think 1B is just the, the legacy doc system deprecation plan. Um, since we're still in the early stages of the quarter, we're not really adding a whole lot of notes on that. That's just our reminder to ourselves that um, if anything occurs to you as you're working on anything else um, with the docs beta or anything related that um, will require us to do some work as we deprecate the old site, please continue to add it to that issue. Um, that's kind of it for that one. Um, underneath Epic 2A, metrics, definition, and collection for the beta site. Um, we're we're going to hold off on this for a little while based on two things. One, um, a little bit more beta site definition under Epic 1A, and then also when John onboards to put together um, the requirements for, uh, for, for the metrics themselves. So no, no movement there, and that's, that's fine. Um, moving on to Epic 2B, Eric, you did this amazing thing for the is this helpful feedback mechanism. It's all mocked up. You want, you want to talk about that? Yeah. 2B, 2B. Oh, yeah. I can share the screen. Oh, please. I would choose desktop one. Now sharing desktop one. Do we have it here? No, oh, yes, we do. Uh, yeah, I started out a wireframe and then it just kind of became more than a wireframe, thankfully, <laughs> um, for pages which don't have. Yeah, oh, this is actually a different issue, but yes, please oh, show this it? off. <laughs> this, is, this is 342. This is the thing Chris mentioned. Just slip that in there. Oh, fine. yeah. Okay. <laughs> then 2B is the, oh, is this hot? Oh, I got, I got that too. We got that. <laughs> This it feels like this is probably this is probably done. We just have to deal with the outstanding question is how we deal with feedback comments. Um, yes, Chris. One thing probably worth capturing that I haven't put into this issue yet, but I'll discuss it now for the sake of the call is that um, Eric and I had a conversation around trying to create some um, uniformed sort of metrics uh, around the replies instead of having potential just loose form replies uh, from a from a submit box so say if we had some stock answers so if someone said no i don't like this and then it said 
oh, what is that? Is it because the content's out of date or it's because it didn't solve my problem? Uh, maybe a, a base set of four or five things, then at least then we'd be able to graph out the, the different sort of responses um, in more of a, a, a metrics driven sort of high level approach rather than having to parse all of the, the feedback manually. Um, so that might be one thing that we could consider, or it could be that we do that as a, an additional phase later on. So we could say we have a loose input now and see what happens. And then, um, and then we could augment, it, augment that in the future um, with some kind of stock answers if that doesn't work out very well. Because we still don't, we still yet to know whether we, we get any actionable input from those um, things anyway. So um, I love the, the idea of adding, you know, yes, it is one more click. And I don't know, Eric, what you think about that. Um, I think, I think we need it, to test it. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's interesting because if, if we give them like three options, like, yeah, content's out of date or didn't, you know, something broke when I, in, in the command line or, or whatnot. Um, I think if we do that, you're right, that's going to give us a lot more mathematically useful metrics. I think it's also going to increase the chances of people not filling in the verbatim dramatically, but I'm not sure if that's necessarily a bad thing for our purposes. Mm. Yeah, it's a difference. We didn't, as I say, we should test both uh, approaches, I think, because it could be that the responses are so detailed at this, this point, so people will spend the time and energy to reply, or it could be that actually we'll get more responses just because it's one click away and, you know, convenience usually wins most most cases, especially at scale, but um, we don't have, you know, a, a, like tremendous amount of traffic that we're trying to uh, analyze through this. It's more like I know someone wants to indicate a specific problem about a piece of content and it'd be nice to have the exact feedback. So um, somewhere in the middle, we definitely want to optimize it for uh, ease of use. So that we, so we get the input and there's no barriers to entry. So um, creating an issue feels like a big blocker, right? So it's, um, it's going off somewhere. You've got to set titles up and do the tags. You've got to describe it. So unless someone's got the time and energy to do it, they can, might not necessarily do that. Um, so I'm trying to find ways where we could at least get hints and clues towards how we can take actionable input without too much um, user generated input. Um, do you so mind? maybe, yeah, I'll try and summarize those thoughts and put them on the issue. I think that's the best, best, best option, but just to get it all yeah. at my brain now. It's oh, no. video. <laughs> we have, I mean, and we have some time, you know, the deadline for this thing, for this particular issue as is it goes live when the docs feed, it goes live. So we've got some time to iterate on it, but um, awesome that yeah. we're, sort of not, not one of the smaller ingredients right away. And cool. then there's one set additional note, which will be just porting this back, whether or not we do this on the existing site and on the new one, or whether we, we try to choose um, something that works for both um, uh, or just one or the other. Um, I'd, be inclined, also... I'd be inclined to just leave it on the beta site. You know, I think, I, I feel like we might be at the point where we don't want to be putting work back into the, the legacy site, Eric. Mm. Right, it was mocked up because this is all we have right now is, is the is the doc site as it is. Um, and to Chris's point, we are talking about a fraction of a fraction in terms of the, the number of folks who will uh, who will be interacting with this. And so obviously making it as friction free as possible is going to be a big win. Generally try to in, in put as much friction into my interactions as possible. But in this case, <laughs> and, uh, Oh, sorry, Fire entry. And uh, also, I don't know if, if, if it was mentioned, currently on the docs, on the docs site, um, the edit this page in GitHub is, is all the way down at the bottom. And it's a stack I love of, that you moved it. Yeah, that was for, for a footer. So I promoted it here on the notion that, you know, this is sort of the, hey, this page, uh, it's it's great or it's the evaluate you know as a user here's here's how you can evaluate this page here so you could tell us what you think or here's how you can go ahead and enact a change just so maybe okay so 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 i was about to be like i think we shouldn't build any more features into the existing site but i think that's such a good one um maybe that is the one thing that we that we rearrange in the existing doc site maybe um it's not anything it's not a new feature it's yeah just a, it's just yeah, a I completely agree with spring cleaning and it, it's things that are small enough like that that could help make it more uh, obvious. Um, Eric, do you, mind, okay. do you mind, Eric, adding a note in issue 305 that says, let's only do this on the beta, but let's move, let's move the edit this page link on the alpha so that we don't yep. forget? 
yeah. And then if you actually do click uh, a yes, no, then, then uh, one thought here is to actually give them, you know, ch turn that into a file and issue sort of a thing um, to, you know, which, which supplants the edit this page if they've already taken action. Which I think is, I think is awesome. I think we still have we still have the open question about like serverless site and text field links and how we capture all of that. That's something. That it sounds like we're not really prepared to answer yet, um, but that we need to keep in the back of our minds. Yeah, we could we could basically capture that into without getting too technical in the call, but we can throw it into the uh, event log. Um, but it doesn't get formatted. We don't capture who did it, uh, so we have no follow up. All those types. Of, so there's some downsides to both. Um, the issue is the best way because then obviously we can track it all the way through. We can alert on status, um, and we can reply to people uh, just to you know clarify what they were saying just in case. So uh, partly, if I were going for very long form feedback, I rather push them towards an issue because we're going to be able to action it a lot better than we will with just a some kind of static feedback uh, input box which is a bit more friction but the overall benefit is that we can put it in our tool chain like, like we mentioned before we um, can also we could also note that in the text you know or if you'd like file an issue with git in github parens this means we can follow up with you you know something you know super super sort of carroty rather than sticky and just have a really well formatted GitHub issue template. All right. First off, are you talking about sticky carrots? Because that sounds really interesting. <laughs> I might, I might carrot or stick. stick. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, um, it's toffee apple season. So. The, oh yeah, man. The, uh, yeah, I just got some awesome ones. I could put it into the city every year. Just this one place. But uh, the, um. The, the kind of people who are at this site and are using our stuff to begin with, you know, generally very github -y folks. Yeah. How about one thing then? So they'll make it a simpler implementation and a lot quicker to deploy. We, we do the first step, which is when anyone clicks the yes or no, we create an issue link and a template just to start with so that we force people there. And then if that doesn't work out and people don't, have any feedback then we think about new ways to implement other metrics um because that way we uh, start pushing people into like yes you can send us your thoughts if this didn't um uh, if this didn't work out for you mm -hmm. and i think if you if you had the intermediate step of like the click the button for the thing that you didn't like um and then if you wanted to go further um then that pushed them through to github um I think that gives them sort of an initial step where they could give a little bit more feedback. I think if we just send them straight through to GitHub, like that can feel daunting. Like, oh wow, even with a you know even a really well fleshed out template, like paradoxically looks you know looks like it's probably going to take longer to fill in because there's like all this like scaffolding text in the issue. So I, yeah, I, I can see both sides of that. Maybe maybe we talk through that a little bit mm. more as this continues. But that's a thought. That's definitely a thought, Eric. Yeah, I think it's a super fascinating thing to to try and figure out because there's so many layers of what there there is like is this person comfortable with GitHub and there and then there's does this person feel like oh I'm being a little bit too forward by filing a full on issue as opposed to you know I was just a little annoyed by this page so I want and I saw a thing to click so yeah there there, there might point. actually be an indirect an indirect intermediate test in this if we like like kind of like right now, move to the edit this page in GitHub link up further next to in, in the existing site and just like see if people see people do it. <laughs> yeah, fix it. Fix like, the thing. Yeah. How long how long would that take to that, that, that's why I was proposing that I'm thinking actually those two things. So uh, so if we think about the the metric step with a set of decisive actions as a as a as a new thing. So that's what we'd have to discuss and figure out what kind of things we wanted to track. So that's going to take a little bit more time between us to um, to finalize and implement. But the migration of the or the moving of the link and proposing that they file an issue of some sort or edit the page is actually very quick because we essentially just adding some additional text instead of just saying thank you. It will be yeah. thank you and and you can either edit this page or you can file an issue. So that could get, get done very, very fast. And then while we are fig figuring out the next stage, we can at least leave that running. Um, yeah, and we, could do, we can do that in the legacy site just so that we see how people, exactly. how people act. 
is that something do you do you have do you have time yeah yeah that's that i so that i'd happy to commit to with what we're doing right now so that's actually something you can do so um because the other one's a bit more unknown and i'd rather develop that within the context of whatever we're building um uh, for an improvement step so i think that's a useful thing to port um, I sort of, I sort of feel like, I sort of feel like, aside from yeah, the changes to the legacy site, that this epic is sort of on hold until we know a little bit more about like the actual visual structure of the beta site. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's wrap that one up. But that sounds great. Right. I'll put a note in the um, issue. Thank you. Uh, seven minutes. Let's zoom through stuff. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, usability testing. Epic two C. So IPFS Colorado User Testing Day is Wednesday, um, being that I am currently in Colorado. Um, I have signs on my clocks now. I don't know, can you read those? You might have to like maybe like, <laughs> um, they say Boulder, UTC, London, and Sydney. Um, <laughs> UTC the place. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's really nice. It's always sunny in UTC. Um, <laughs> So, um, so IPFS Colorado User Testing Day is Wednesday. Eric and I will be there um, talking to the peeps, um, potentially handing out some swag if we get the swag box in time. That's a little bit iffy. If not, we're going to sacrifice our own personal unused swag, lightly, lightly unused swag. Um, it's going to be ad hoc testing just based on who shows up. Um, I think we have, I think we have two confirmed scheduled appointments from folks who are not organizers, just like people from the community. Um, the two organizers also want to do the testing and they have a level of expertise um, that can prove very, very useful, which is awesome. And then we also have people who are coming in through the day. I'm gonna ping all the attendees today and just say like, please, please set up a, a calendar time. Um, if they don't, then we're just gonna go hang out in the lobby. Like, hey, who's here for IPFS? Come on, you owe us some testing. Um, we will write up a summary document and, and throw that in a GitHub issue uh, when we're done and report back here, probably next, next, one, uh, next Monday's meeting. Um, how if we if we end up testing uh, the IA structure is the best way to do that at this point still in workflow? Or do we have a left hand. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah, I mean you were sick. I don't want to like. I'm sorry. That that sounds. I, I have I do have a, a page structure already, but I don't have all the stubs written out. Um, so Eric and I were discussing about uh, so what we're going to do. The, the phase is actually creating all the templates manually and then porting in the content that we want for each piece, um, which unfortunately will take longer. Long. So we'll have a few pages, but we won't have the full structure. So if you want to test the structure, then it's probably better to look at that that way. Well, I, as far as as far as like if we if we were just showing a workflowy, that wouldn't click through to like any content anyway. So I just sort of wondered, do you think there's value in getting a left-hand nav in in a, a you know scaffolding site that legit doesn't link to anything, but is actually the left-hand nav as as we might see it? In, uh, that is my first target, so uh, I can race at that to see if we can get it done in time. Um, if, if you possible. happen to, if you happen to, it looks more it looks more legit. If you don't, then you don't. Sure. Is that okay. good to you, Eric? Eric is not yep, here. it can work either way. Cool, cool. Okay. When do you, when would you need that by? Do you say? Sorry. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. It would be today and tomorrow. You don't you only have today and tomorrow. Yeah, it might be possible. Mm -hmm. It's it's up to mm -hmm. you. I mean, prioritize as, as you feel best. And I may I may be able to like if you could set something up, I'm I'm able to. Yeah, to if it's something we can actually bang yeah. out, populate. Yeah, if it's something we can do, um, if we have access to that, would be awesome too. Happy to do that. Okay, um, let's set that as a as a target, <laughs> but to have a backup plan just in case. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, features voting um, issue three eighteen. Um, Chris, you put in some really good platforms. Um, I contacted Canny to see if they had special pricing as an open source project. I just heard back from them like twenty minutes ago that says um, we have pricing for early stage startups. How old are you? Or like like five years? So like this may not be you know we we may not have access to special pricing for them. Um, which is a pity because I, I do feel like, you know, like I was looking for it and Canny felt like a really, really good fit. It's just, you know, maybe, you know, can we justify paying for a year of full freight Canny while we use it for features prioritization? I'd say yeah, that, too. Um, it's a pretty simple tool. Uh, and yeah. unless we get a whole a higher number of track users, then the pricing doesn't jump up to the high tiers anyway. Uh, so we could commit to just giving it a trial, a trial and see how we go. Um, but there are plenty of other clones that are very similar um, that will also do an equal 
or if not as good job um so um could spend half an hour just checking out the others and see if there's something similar um uh, it doesn't really ma make much difference to me which we use in the end but i do sort of feel like this is going to be like a year's maybe a year's exercise um i would like it to continue to live like the, in, the whole premise of starting this out is that we can integrate this into a workflow long term uh so if it doesn't work then yeah but i'd like to give it the best chance possible to just to integrate um i wish i wish there was like voting features on github issues because that would be a nice uh, a nice way of doing it rather than just using um emojis and you can't really count that up okay all right um i'll write them see what they say um yeah, I mean, the, the intro, the entry tier isn't that expensive. Um, I guess the only danger is that, you know, the thing is like an amazing success and we use it to prioritize and stack rank a bunch of other things and then we're on a platform that's getting <laughs> a little worried about, about lock-in. But, um, but we, can, we can keep talking about that. Um, yeah. Moving on, ecosystem audit. Eric's doing other stuff. Watch this space. Yeah. Um, and then content improvement, user-driven, and legacy content improvement. Um, Epix 3 and 3B, um, right, you know, we're all working on other priorities and we haven't had a lot of time to address these, um, but um, we're continuing to track them. We've got nine open user-driven issues and 40 legacy issues. 17 of those issues are in the same queue. Um, the remaining of the 40 are like really long-term projects and they're sitting in the icebox. Um, so, you know, we're not, we're not in a horrible way. Um, this will change as soon as, you know, once John gets on board it too. That'll be sort of the bulk of his attention. Um, moving on, Epic 3C, content close reading. This is going to be John's primary onboarding task when he joins us at the beginning of November. Um, he's already doing a little bit of exploratory work on this, which is awesome. So um, hopefully he can hit the ground running. Um, and then Proto School updates. Chill, what's up? So I've been, I've been working on going through the feedback I've gotten for the draft of the, the regular file API tutorial. So I've gone through the feedback uh, Eric uh, gave me, and I'm working on the feedback Terry has given me now. Awesome. So it, I'll be working on that as well. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Very concise, one minute in, smash that. <laughs> you're doing a thing, and now you're, you're, you do more of the thing. It is, it is half past whatever time zone you live in, so this meeting is actually officially over. I'm going to pause the uh, stop the recording unless anybody has any other notes. All right. Thank you so much, world of the internet. We will see you next Monday at 5 o'clock UTC. Same bat time, same bat channel. Have a wonderful week.